Hi, I'm Sundata Yet Villarreal Jr. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction C Language Series. Today we are on our Lecture 6, Week 3. Now let's proceed to our topic for today. The first is problems need to be solved. The second topic we have is algorithm development process consists of five major steps. And the last one is the solution to the problem based on algorithm. Okay, let's proceed to the problems needs to be solved. Last time, I gave you assignment to write in Microsoft Word your problems that you already encountered and needed to be solved. But of course, we're going to ask how. Now here is the five steps of algorithm development process consists of these major five steps. The first thing you're going to do is to obtain a description of the problem. After obtaining a description, you need to analyze the problem or you need to analyze the description of the problem. And third, after analysis of the problem, you need to develop a high-level algorithm. If you want to develop a high-level algorithm, you need to understand first algorithm. And if you need to understand algorithm, there's a what they call high level. High level is considered to be juries of algorithm that is been used before by those computer scientists, those scientists, doctors, and even uneducated people. They use high level algorithm. But the problem is that uh, they don't really know what is the word for that but we're going to discuss this uh, algorithm in a matter of uh, minutes number four refine the algorithm by adding more details the algorithm you create you need to check it out where does it came from then the last step five review the algorithm check it out if there are other uh, algorithm that is needed to use to solve the problem. Now step one, obtain a description of the problem. This step is much more difficult than it appears. In the following discussion, the word client refers to someone who wants to find a solution to a problem. And the word developer refers to someone who finds a way to solve the problem. The developer must create an algorithm that will solve the client's problem. But in the situation we have right now, it is you are all developers because you are all IT as first year so you are the one who are going to solve the problem but remember that you are also a client because from the client it appears and listed plenty of problems that needed to be solved by the developer that's why this uh, step one is much more difficult than it appears you are the solver of the problem at the same time you're also the problem and that is step one now there are types of defects in terms of uh, identifying problem identifying or obtaining the description of the problem the first one is that the description relies on unstated assumption it means to say you didn't write exactly what is the real problem okay write the problem instantly in Microsoft Word but you don't realize it that problem does not exist but it is also identified and you didn't even write the exact problem and that is number one number one is that the description relies on unstated assumption you didn't write the exact problem but you put up another problem that is not necessarily to do. Number two, the description is ambiguous. When we said ambiguous is that you write a problem but it is a double edge. Maybe it is not your problem and maybe it is your problem. That is ambiguous. Okay? Remember, you are the you are the problem and you are the solver. So how can you write a problem of other people when in fact you don't know exactly who they really was and that is ambiguous okay for example for this is that you write your friend's problem you write your girlfriend's problem 
So, that is ambiguous. Third, the description is incomplete. Um, incomplete in terms of, you write the problem, but it is half of the problem. It is incomplete, okay? So, for example, is uh, your problem is going to the school. Then, suddenly, you don't have any money. But there are resources like coconut, you have woods, charcoal. Of course, this can be interchanged into money so that you can pay for the ride and you can go to the school. That's why, on the description that you wrote, is something like incomplete, okay? Because you state the problem, but it is only half that you are not only a resourceful person. That's why you encounter those problems. Next, number four. The description has internal contradictions. When we said internal contradiction, is that you are not aware that you wrote a problem that is considered to be your problem. And that is contradictions. So, for example, uh, our problem is a house because we don't have any house. But you're already rented. Of course, you have a house or you are in a shelter. So, there's uh, internal contradictions. That is the defects of uh, identifying the description of the problem. Step number two, analyze the problem. How do we analyze the problem? The purpose of this step is to determine both the starting and ending points to solving the problem. Again, starting and ending points. So you're going to answer the questions, a series of questions, which we use this to analyze the problem. First, what data are available? Two, where is that data? Three, what formulas pertain to the problem? Four, what rules exist for working the data? And the last, what relationships exist among the data values? So, when we said what data are available, you need to identify the theories. Second is, after identifying the theories, you need to study the theories of this algorithm. And after studying this, you have to investigate or analyze something like it is more concise and nearer to your problem. That is how uh, the data is concerned. Now, where's the, that data? Of course, you're going to study on that. But we have personalities which have their wisdom. They already have the data problem. Number three, what formulas pertain to the problem? In any circumstances, formulas are considered to be scattered. And the reality is that everything on earth is considered to be a formula into a mathematics. Identifying something like 50% solve the problem, 70% solve the problem, 100% solve the problem. So, how can you identify the percent without the formula? So, you needed also formula. So, this is our validation in terms of the analysis of the problem. Number four, what rules exist for working with the data? If you obey the Ten Commandments, then, of course, that is the rule. There are no more rules. It meant to say you can do anything as long as you are abiding the Ten Commandments because we are a Christian country. And I think this can help even though it is not a Christian people because it's for the good of the people. Next, number five, last, what relationship exists among the data values? So relationship is very important. Why? Because it connects the ideas that you create, that you mentioned, and that you need to implement. So there should be a relationship for those, just to analyze the problem. When determining the end point, we need to describe the characteristics of the solution. In other words, how will you, we know when you're done asking the following question? Often helps to determine the ending point. So here are the questions on the ending point. What new facts will we have? What items will have changed? What changes will have been made to those items? And what things will no longer exist? So the first one is that, what new fact will we have? So there are plenty of people, not only you, was being encountered the problem of yours listed in Microsoft Word. And they already solved this problem. That's why in the discussion we have is that plenty of problems right now are already been solved before of our grand grandfathers. The only thing that uh, it is not been exercised is that it is not been teach to our niece. Uh, that is the idea. That is the fact. Now next, what items will be changed or have changed? So everything on earth changes. 
even the trees, the air, the water, okay? Even its people. Now, what changes will have been made to those items? So, we need to change because we cannot solve the problem in something like we are not changing ourselves. First is the mentality. Second is spiritually. Third is econo economically. Fourth is naturally. So, we need to change. What things will no longer exist? There are things that can no longer exist. For example, you want to turn it back. Turning it back when in fact there is no already been exist. For example, the extinct animals, extinct plants, extinct grandfather or grand-grandfather, it is no longer exist, then how can you put that into a problem so that is unambiguous? So if it is not exist, don't make it a problem, okay? Next, step three, develop a high-level algorithm. To develop a high-level algorithm, the algorithm is a plan for solving a problem. So again, plan. It is also a recipe. But plans come in a several level of detail. It's usually better to start with a high-level algorithm that includes the major part of a solution but leaves the detail until later. We can use an everyday example to demonstrate a high-level algorithm. That's why I told you that what the experience you have done or encountered, it can help us in in the way we solve the problem. So those experiences of your grand-grandfather, grand-grandmother, they can help us as long as they were going to teach. Step 4. Refine the algorithm by adding more detail. In refining, a high-level algorithm shows a major steps that needs to be followed to solve a problem. Again, look at this. To refine an algorithm, there is a major steps to follow. If you didn't follow this, you cannot solve the problem. And what did I mention a while ago? First, there are theories and there are names of the algorithm. Next, now we need to add details to these steps, but how much detail should we add? Unfortunately, the answer to this question depends on the situation. So again, you need to solve the problem, but it still depends on you because you are the solver. Next, we have to consider who or what is going to implement the algorithm and how much that person or thing already knows how to do. It means to say, you cannot solve the problem because you didn't even study it. Unless otherwise, which I mentioned a while ago, that there are some people who didn't educate it, but they have their own wisdom, they can solve the problem. We add more details to a previous algorithm, stopping when we see no benefit of further refinement. This technique of gradually working from a high level to a detailed algorithm is often called stepwise refinement. It meant to say, if the solution or the plan you make is not working, then you make another plan, which is more accurate than the first plan you created. Next, we have stepwise refinement is a process of for developing a detailed algorithm by gradually adding detail to a high-level algorithm. Step 5. Review the algorithm. What are we looking for? First, we need to work through the algorithm step by step to, de to determine whether or not it will solve the original problem. Once we are satisfied that the algorithm does provide a solution to the problem, we start to look for other things. Asking these questions and seeking their answer is a good way to develop skills that can be applied to the next problem. So if you got the correct one on the start, you need to proceed to the middle and then proceed to the last phase. So that's all for today. Congratulations, you successfully finished our lecture number six. Thank you and good luck.